Hi, everyone. I'm doing this live. Uh, so I wanted to start by thanking the conference organizers for making NASIS 2020 happen. NASIS is very important to me, and I'm sure it is to all of you as well. And that's why you are here. So I wanted to express my gratitude to the organizers and to all of you who are participating in NASIS, either as a attendee or a presenter. And thanks for coming to my virtual talk about Maps for Adobe. My name is Sarah Bell, and I'm going to talk to you today about the latest updates to Esri's mapping extension that has been developed in, uh, for Adobe Illustrator. Um, and long story short, I can't have a webcam rolling right now. So this is what I look like right now as I talk to you. Um, and there's my little dog, Jasper, who turned 13 yesterday. So um, the full name, let me get situated here of, sorry, live. Live stream. Okay, so the full name of this Illustrator mapping extension is called ArcGIS Maps for Adobe Creative Cloud. And for those of you who are hearing about Maps for Adobe for the first time, it's a mapping plugin that's been designed for use in Adobe Illustrator and it also works in Photoshop. And you can download it at the URL that you see here next to the word where and the when. Well, we are about three years old now and we just are about to release version 2.2 this month, which you can find at that URL that I have here. Um, and I have about 15 minutes to talk with you. So I'm mainly gonna be focusing on those 2.0 and 2.2 updates. But at the end, I'm gonna share a nice list of posts and tutorials that cover a lot of other great mapping stuff that you can do with this extension. So some fun history um, about Maps for Adobe that's related to NASIS. At NASIS 2015, there really wasn't a Maps for Adobe team. There were just a few of us Esri folks who were conceptualizing new ways to integrate mapping tools into Adobe Illustrator. And this is the NASA's 2015 catalog description of the talk that I co-presented with Clint Loveman way back when this prototype was called Venus. And I'll read the description for you. We understand that many cartographers use GIS applications together with Adobe products for improved designs. We wanna share some background on why map exports currently don't work the way you may expect. In addition, We'll, we'll share some future concepts we hope will help you with these interoperability workflows. And so here is a screenshot of the Venus prototype and its charmingly underdeveloped appearance before we had our talented UI lead Manuel Lopez join our team. And at this point, the prototype could pull in geographic data uh, from ArcGIS Online into an Illustrator file, but much of the finesse and functionality in that workflow did not yet exist. And just in case you're curious, ArcGIS Pro 1.0 happened to be released in 2015 as well. And then in May of 2017, Maps for Adobe 1.0 was released. And so version 1.0 has many of the great features to build a map all directly inside of Adobe, Adobe Illustrator. So each of these maps I made with um, the features available in the first version 1.0 through version 1.52. And this ca capability to build a map inside Adobe Illustrator without requiring a desktop GIS has been very popular for the graphic design world. In fact, it's been so successful for graphic designers that we were invited to talk about it on Adobe Live, which is Adobe's live stream broadcast. But it's people like you who are steeped into the GIS and data science cartography world who pushed Maps for Adobe further. So the ArcMap to Illustrator export has been a huge part of many cartographers' workflow. And with the advent of ArcGIS Pro, those cartographers, myself included, have wanted a Pro to Illustrator solution. And that solution was released this past May with Maps for Adobe 2.0. So now, with ArcGIS Pro 2.5 and later, you can export an AIX file from Pro. And an AIX, it's a new file type known as an Adobe Illustrator Exchange file. And it can be opened by all Illustrator users who have um, an ArcGIS Online uh, uh, creator or GIS professional account. So if you have that, you already have access to all of these features. And that brings us to, sorry, this says this week, it's this month, October, uh, um, we have version 2.2. And so let's go into that a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna go to Pro. Here we are in Pro. Uh, yes, so this map layout is set up like a typical thematic map for the lower 48 United, or for the uh, United States. 
we have a map frame for Alaska, Hawaii, and the lower 48, and then my map, uh, my layout right here that I titled thematic map. And I could have made any type of map for this demo. I could have made a topo style map, a large scale building footprint map, or any map because the Pro to AX workflow, the steps are all the same. But I just uh, decided to use this post office's, post office's data set, which is this data set of over 32,000 points right here. Um, and let's talk a little bit about that. Because the post offices are a celebrated part of American life and they've become extremely, extremely important during this current pandemic. Let me turn off a legend. Okay, so this data comes from the USGS GNIS national data set, which is offered as a text file. I first extracted the post offices from the text file. Then I used pros display XY function to create a spatial layer since that text file has latitude and longitude fields. Then I removed all the post offices from this layer that had the word historical in their name because those I believe are the ones that have been decommissioned. And just out of curiosity, mostly, I also included a FedEx data set. Um, so it's this about 9,000 point data set right here. Um, let's talk about that data set real quick. So it's available from the Department, Department of Homeland Security's open data. Um, the original data set had what are called self-serve boxes, which are basically those outdoor metal boxes that you drive up to and drop off your package that aren't necessarily attached to uh, or associated with a building. And I removed those from the data set because I was initially looking for some sort of parity between the post offices and the FedEx locations. And the post offices data set does not have their Dropbox locations, but the FedEx and US post office are quite different. So um, I think that in order to do an adequate uh, comparison, more research has to be done. But so what remains in this uh, FedEx data set are what FedEx calls authorized shipping centers and FedEx staffed locations. So let's look at the remaining layers real quick. I'll even turn these off so we can get a nice dive into it. Okay, so just US counties layer. And then I symbolized this one by as a choropleth map, it's polygons. Um, so we have population density here. And then it had a spatial joint with that post offices data set and the, uh, to the counties so that I could do uh, post offices per capita map. I did the same thing with the FedEx. I did FedEx for per capita post offices, just a raw post offices per county um, choropleth map, and then the FedEx per county. And then of course the two point, point data sets. And each of these map frames has the identical layers, the Hawaii and Alaska. So that's, I'm gonna show you an illustrator before I export this as an AIX file. I wanna take a glimpse into why the AIX export is so valuable by first looking at a PDF export, which was the format that you would have used in Illustrator before Maps for Adobe 2.0. So this is a PDF export of just those layers from the lower 48. Um, and I have removed all of the clipping, mass, clipping paths and groups just to show you what's going on here, which is that all of the um, pieces of artwork and all of those choropleth layers are in this one single layer. So remember I said there's over 32,000 points. Well, we have those 32,000 points plus the FedEx points, um, plus all the labels and then all of those layers of polygons in here. So if I wanted to say, for example, edit just this layer, just this category from just this layer, I'd have a really hard time finding those in here. So I'd either have to spend half a day to full day organizing this or export each one as its own map and then organize those separately. So that's a little background on the PDF. Um, let's go back to Pro. So to share as an AIX file, how you do that is you go to the share tab in Pro and then click the layout button. And the nice folks on the ArcGIS Pro team have given us all of these really great file types to export to. And this new one at the top is the AIX file. So I select that and I would just click export. But since I only have 15 minutes and this takes about a minute to export, I'm gonna, I have already done it before. And here it is. So as you can see, um, I have uh, 
now more than one layer. I have all of these parent layers. I have a parent layer for the legend. I'll turn that off. I have a parent layer for the Hawaii labels and Hawaii and same with Alaska and then labels for lower 48 and then the lower 48 parent layer. So let's dig into that one a little. So now I have this sub layer um, and I can expand and find, let's just isolate the view of the pop of the post offices per capita, which is pretty amazing uh, results, uh, which we'll share at the end. If I select just this category, now I can do all sorts of things to edit it. I'm just gonna change the color, um, but you can do all sorts of things, resize them all at once or whatever. So you can see the time that has been saved just by exporting this as an AIX, which is available to um, today. But coming up this month, um, remember that I said, we're re releasing 2.2 this month and the updates of this new release include what is called a geo-enabled AIX file, which means that you can open an AIX file in Illustrator and then keep adding more data to it while in Illustrator. <clears throat> so for those of you familiar with Maps for Adobe, uh, you know that uh, in the extension, the map boards window is where you create your map board extent. And that's, we call that the map board. Well, when you open an AIX file, automatically each of the map boards from your map, will, from, from each of the, I guess we should say layouts um, from your map will be loaded as a map board. So if I select this lower 48 and go to the compilation window, I can add more data to my map and I'll do that. Um, this is just a base map for context. So I go to add layers. I could add layers from a file or any um, different ways of adding data with ArcGIS Online. So you could, I could search for ArcGIS Online, the whole of ArcGIS Online, living atlas of the world or all of these categories. I'm just gonna go to my content because when I do a thematic map of the United States, I like to draw my, uh, my borders without the coastlines and without the international borders because I like to use other data um, independent from the state boundaries. So I'm just gonna add that real quick to my map and click close. And so you can see it's been added to my map. When I download this, the base map won't be added. Um, they're nice and pink so that you can see them. And I'm going to go ahead and add this to my map. So this message is telling me that um, synced artwork will be saved in the Illustrator document. So let me explain a little bit about what that means. Right now, as this data is getting added to my Illustrator file, um, it's also being added, information is being added to the file itself. So that if I were to close this file, say work on it for a while, close it, go on a nice vacation, come back, open Illustrator, um, you know, in three weeks, I, I could log into Maps for Adobe, open that Illustrator file, and the state of my compilation window here would be remembered, it would be the same. So all the data I added, um, the map extent, everything. And this function is really great for when you're gonna be spending a lot of time on a map, or if you're gonna be creating multiple maps over the same extent. Um, so let's just see, it looks like it's been added. <laughs> so um, yeah, you can see my nice pink <laughs> state borders um, and it has its own parent layer. So now I can, edit those as I want um, and keep going on. But I have just a little bit more to say because I did promise you some links. So let's, let me show you those. Um, this one has been added at the end. I, I know I can't share, I don't have enough time to share with you the maps that I made from this. But if you go to this link, cerebellmaps.com slash blog, you'll see uh, the finished maps of this post office data. Um, and then every other URL here, if you want to take a screenshot, because I know it's kind of text heavy, um, has links to other things you can do with this extension. And we will, we will be releasing a book in late winter, early spring, um, which is what that is there. And I cannot leave without thanking my wonderful Master Adobe team. Um, we don't get to see each other a lot right now because we're working remotely, but I have to thank everyone here um, on this screen that you see, wonderful team that I get to work with every day. And I'm terrible at goodbyes, but I just wanna say thank you.
Thank you so much, Sarah. That was amazing. Those are great tools to have. I really appreciate it.